Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown, the unofficial sumo podcast for official sumo fans. Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown. This is Ryan. This is Jake. This is Flarek. And this is Mac. And it's been a long time since the four of us were together to record an episode. I apologize to all of the Grand Sumo Breakdown fans out there who've just been clamoring and yearning for content from us. Uh, but <laughs> just <laughs> all ten Lord, of you, February thank you. Sucks. We miss you. <laughs> yeah, it was Lord, a good weekend February for sucks. people who had been waiting for Grand Sumo Breakdown because uh, <laughs> yeah, finally got off my butt, got a couple episodes out, and we're going to have a third one right away before the Basho even. Yeah. Uh, on my part, I no longer have an ulcer in my eye. Uh, that is that is a nice change of pace, and I am no longer suffering from the effects of food poisoning. Uh, so not a banner month in the Smithman household uh, at all. <laughs> You're still a pain in the ass, Ryan. We still love you. That pain's always going to be there, but I, luckily for me, I don't feel that one. That's all on you. Uh, and you know what? I think everybody should feel very honored that they have all four of us because – Looking at Flarek on the video chat, I'm pretty sure that's a man that woke up a total of 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Tops. <Yes. laughs> you, you guys are truly blessed. <laughs> blessed this day. Uh, so, Jake, what are we talking about today? Today, we are talking about the recently retired Koto Shogaku, um, oh. somebody who absolutely 100% deserves his own bonus episode. Um, so, uh, put together, put together some stuff on, uh, on his career, on his style, on some of the, some of the fun facts about Kota Shogaku, but as always, it's a history episode. So we got to have some dumb gimmick, right? Mm -hmm. And so even though it makes me feel kind of bad to phrase it this way, Kota Shogaku is kind of, kind of a one hit wonder. He got the one you show. Yeah, it was a big one. Uh, the number one fun fact about Kota, uh, Kota Shogaku is he he got that 2016 you show, uh, the one that broke the 10 year Mongolian and Eastern European streak of you shows. Um, but that was kind of the kind of the big highlight by like an enormous margin. Um, you know, there's there's plenty of other stuff that he did. He was an extremely notable wrestler, but like he he really just had the one you show, and uh, so I figured. If we're talking one hit wonders, let's get some music trivia and I will be yeah. periodically asking you guys trivia about other famous one hit wonders. <laughs> All right. So I'll ask a question and then first person to type a correct answer in our chat is gets a point. Um, and at the end of the episode, there will be a prize that I'll improvise at the time that I need to. <laughs> but until then, why don't we start it off real quick? Uh, I'll give everybody a little bit of time to think it's open notes and all that, but uh, however you come about it, whatever your whoever gets the first correct answer wins wins the question. So for a practice here, uh, Vanessa Carlton. I hate all of these Kodo Shogiku tabs I had opened in preparation for this. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. fool! There will be plenty of sumo, but there's also got to be a little bit of dicking around. So just as a, as a practice question here, uh, Vanessa Carlton and the Proclaimers would both walk a really long ways. How far would they walk combined? Oh dear Lord. Um... <laughs> Just based on the titles of the songs. Okay. <laughs> 10,000 miles. Terrible job typing in the chat there, Mac. Yeah. Um, Come on. But uh, yeah, Ryan gets a point. The combined distance that they would walk <laughs> is 1,500 miles. <laughs> Flerick's answer is also mostly correct. Would, would you read us your answer, Flerick? Uh, do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> how close okay. did i get you you get you get you get half a point okay. see, why would i why would i put my answer in the chat when our listeners can't see the chat and then it just involves more effort to read what was in the chat i'm trying to cut out the middleman of course mac just trying to buck all the rules immediately you yeah, with, know with i the have wrong to answer do it. too <laughs> yeah hey my answer could be right in oh. certain circumstances <laughs> i mean if you if if she sings the chorus 10 times in a thousand miles. We're moving on. Yes. In January <laughs> of 1984, the world was blessed with Kitsugi Kazuhiro, uh, one of three sons of a builder uh, who got into sumo pretty early in his life. Uh, he actually met Takano Ohana as a kid, got to sit on his lap and got a picture of it. And that's part of what inspired him to pursue the sport. Also, the fact that he's ginormous, which I imagine 
most ginormous <laughs> Japanese children think about sumo at least once or twice. <laughs> uh, but he was very successful from an early age. Uh, in junior high, he was actually the junior high Yokozuna. He went to a popular sumo high school, the same one that Asashori went to. And immediately out of high school, he is recruited to Sarogatake Beya, the one with all the Kotos right now and forever. I mean, they, Koto is kind of their thing. So he took on the Shikona very creatively, of course, uh, of Koto Kikutsugi. Just put <laughs> Koto in front of his last name and call it a new name. Um, what is something that Wright said Fred is too sexy for? Uh, yeah. uh, two correct answers, three correct answers. Yes, there's there's a lot of them. Uh, Mac was the first one to get a correct answer. <laughs> he is too sexy for his shirt. I, I would like to for my shirt so sexy it hurts. I would like to cut that off immediately. Uh, but I'd also <laughs> like to point out that Mac said my shirt, which would indicate Right Said Fred was too sexy for Mac's shirt, but <laughs> Right Said Fred was too sexy for Right Said Fred's shirt. So I don't think that should count. So Kodo Kikutsugi <laughs> had a pretty rapid rise through the lower divisions. And within two years, uh, he was in Jurio, and he had changed his Shikona to Kodo Shogiku. He kept Kodo as part of like the, you know, that's, you know, the, the stable. You got to have Kodo in there. Uh, Kodo, uh, the kanji for it, I believe the translation would be like harp. Mm. I don't know. Uh, so a musical instrument, I imagine. Uh, show, me, the kanji that he chose for the middle is to urge or encourage. And Giku is chrysanthemum. So kind of a nonsensical Shikona, but it sounds awesome. And the encouraging awesome. flower harp. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. It's it's a weird one. Oh, peaceful. I like it. Mm -hmm. uh, so his stay in Jurio was awfully brief. Uh, he really only had three, uh, do, 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 four tournaments in Jurio total. Uh, five, if you count his most recent one when he retired. Uh, yep. But uh, he had... A 10 win, a 9 win, and a 10 win to just blast Damn. through Jurio the first time. But he did not make his first stay in the top division stick. He only got five wins. So they send him back down to Jurio, and he's like, nah, screw all that. He gets 13 wins, wins the U show, and he never shows up in Jurio again until 2021. So, yeah, that's, a that's let's see, 16 years straight uh, in the top division. Pretty solid. Not one. bad. Yeah. Uh, Torn was sung by Natalie what? Oh, done that's like my number one one hit wonder i love that song to death. <laughs> technically you spelled it wrong oh shit there's an r in there <laughs> i'll give it to him like you were gonna come up with imbruglia yeah no there was no way i was gonna come up with imbruglia <laughs> silent g and everything <laughs> um where were we so uh even though he had a, a, a debut a little bit beforehand that didn't stick, his effectively his real Makuchi debut is in May of 2005, and he just plows through that at the same rate he's been plowing through everything. Uh, Koto Shogaku gets into the joy within a year, and within another year he's at Sekiwake. Uh, he's he's in the joy for like uh, all except for one basho where he dropped out of the joy. Uh, from 2006 until he gets Ozeki like five years later. Like he's, he's a absolutely a joy mainstay this whole time. He's uh, uh, in 2008, he was named as one of the seven samurai, which is kind of like, it was unofficial. It was like one particular commentary guys uh, group of like, these are the seven Japanese guys that, uh, you know, might be able to take back dominance from the, from the Mongolians. So, so in, in addition to Kota Shogaku, we had uh, Kisuno Sato, Goedo, Toyonoshima, Tochi Ozan. Uh, and then the other two guys are the, the only two that like we as a group haven't seen for a long time, like aren't super familiar with would be Toyo Hibiki and Homasho. Mm -hmm. um, Homasho was a was a joy mainstay for a long time, uh, but he got injured and dropped out basically right before we started watching. So we he's certainly somebody that we would have known very well had we just started watching sumo a little bit earlier. Uh, Toyo Hibiki is actually still wrestling. Uh, he's the last one of the seven samurai that's still going, but he's been in Makushta for a long time and he sat out the last tournament injured. So he's probably on his way out pretty quick here too. Uh, what song did Vanilla Ice shamelessly rip off in Ice Ice Baby? Mm -hmm. Typing it out. It is Under Pressure. Dang it. 
I like Flarek's strategy here of like, nah, I don't know that one. <laughs> I, was like, oh, I typed it up. But I, uh, I, I actually did know that one, but I knew I wasn't going to, no way I was going to type it fast enough. He's sipping his coffee. Let him drink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Flarek's- as Flarek is sitting there daintily holding a cup of coffee with both hands, he cannot be bothered to drop the coffee and type out an answer without <laughs> spilling his coffee everywhere. I'm working my way up. I'm working my way up. <laughs> I, I mean, I get it. Finger warmth is just as important as winning a special, super incredible prize that is totally going to mm-hmm. tear Ryan up inside if he doesn't win. Um, <laughs> yeah. What Ryan doesn't know is the questions aren't all weighted the same. So who knows? Oh, who's no. in the lead. That's, Ooh. that's the that's the thing I'm thinking about right there. Like galaxy braining <laughs> this. He's going to go for the one that's worth 10,000 points. He's saving his energies. Yeah. yeah. No, I get he's it. waiting to Baron. That's all he's doing right now is just waiting to Baron. <laughs> um so in let's see here uh the the next notable thing that happens here in Kota Shogaku's career is he kind of gets uh he kind of gets involved a little bit in a bigger scandal a gambling scandal actually oh no the same one that our chicken farmer got involved with no this is not the 2011 match fixing gambling this is ah. prior to that uh Koto Mitsuki uh, another another guy in the same stable. Uh, this is the one where there was gambling on uh, baseball. Hmm. Um, so this is this is in 2010, mid year 2010. Uh, Koto Mitsuki uh, denies everything, uh, but eventually gets booted. Uh, he got booted straight out from the Ozeki rank, uh, where he had earned a U show and eight Jun U shows. It was a big deal. He was a huge huge deal at the time. Um, and Kota Shogaku. The, the phrasing that I got here was, despite admitting some involvement with gambling in the wake of the scandal surrounding his stablemate, Koto Mitsuki, it was not deemed serious enough to warrant a suspension for Koto Shokiku. Some other like different level players got minor suspensions and stuff like that. I'm very curious what Koto Shokiku admitted to, but because gambling is illegal in Japan, like sports gambling in general is illegal it's still it's a big deal no matter what the involvement is. Maybe he just admitted to like knowledge that it was going on, but not actual mm-hmm. participation yeah. in it. Mm. He, o- he only lost a couple million. So, <laughs> <laughs> and when you when you do the uh, difference between yen and American dollars, it's what ten bucks. So, Man. yeah, something yeah. like that. So he didn't get uh, Kota Shogaku did not get suspended when his stablemate got booted out. But uh, the drama surrounding it led to him having a pretty crappy 5 and 10 Basho following that up. Speaking of a 5 and 10 Basho, who did the Macarena? Oh, crap. <laughs> I mean, obviously everyone did the Macarena, <laughs> but like, who did the song? Technically, there's no S on the end of it, but yes. Uh, <laughs> or wait, no, you got the, you got the words out of order. Oh, um, Los del Rio. Los some... del Rio. Le, Los, Los del Rio. Rio. Yeah, I <laughs> got close enough that I I say it counts for full points. I'm giving you a half a point. <laughs> I could see the two men, but I was like, crap. I only paid attention to the dancing women. Um, <laughs> what was their name? <laughs> yeah, wasn't it like like pretty like middle aged dudes, right? Yeah, just like oh yeah, not pop stars in any way. No. <laughs> so now we get to the Ozeki run. Uh, in 2011, Kota Shogaku had been in the Joy for a long time, been in the Sanyaku specifically for a long time. He, he was very clearly going to, ha- this was going to happen at some point. Uh, and in 2011, he just totally pops off and kicks everyone's ass. Uh, in January, he goes 11 and four, gets the Jun Yu show and a technique prize. In March of 2011, anybody know what happens? Uh, no, it's it's canceled. One. Nothing happens. Yes, <laughs> that's the one that's canceled. Uh, but he comes back and in May of 2011 gets a 10 and five. So he's kind of like middling, like, you know, he's, he's hanging in there, but still kind of like Ozeki run form in, uh, uh, in July though, gets 11 and four gets the outstanding performance prize. And at this point he could have been promoted. That's two prizes, a junior show and uh 32 wins. So it's like debatable that it could have happened. Um, but they did not give him the promotion after that. How many Ozeki did they have at that time? Uh, I think it was kind of crowded. Um, let's see here. Let's go to 2011, 09. Uh, we got, oh, I guess we only got three, and we only have one Yokozuna mm-hmm. at the time. Okay. Yeah, because I, I know that's something that people talk about when we're talking about uh, Ozeki runs and all that, and like 
Asanoyama promoted after only 32 wins, but we only had one Ozeki at the time. And there sounds like in history, they're more likely to promote somebody with like a borderline case when there's fewer Ozeki. But if it's kind of bunched up up there, you got to really prove your, your spot. So I, yeah. I think that makes sense that we saw Asanoyama with kind of that same level of performance as Kodo Shogiku, maybe even not quite that level get promoted to Ozeki just a couple of years ago, but uh, Kodo Shogiku with it being much more crowded at the top, he didn't get that same uh, treatment. Yeah. At, at the time of this promotion, just for context, we had Hakuho as the sole Yokozuna, Haruma Fuji, Baruto and Kota Oshu as the Ozeki. Mm. And uh, in this exact tournament, Actually, we had Kota Shogaku, Kisuno Sato, and Kakuryu as Sekiwake. Oh, wow. And Tochi no, to, uh, Toyo Noshima as one of the Komosubi. That, that is a stacked top of the Holy bonsai cow. right there. Sounds um, like it. But yeah, so in, uh, in September of 2011, though, uh, after being denied the promotion, Kota Shogaku must have taken that personally. Uh, because <laughs> he goes 12 and 3, gets a Jun Yu show, two prizes, and then yeah. Yeah, we, we'll promote you there. <laughs> um, so he was the first Japanese Ozeki since Kodo Mitsuki, the guy who got booted out. So this was a four-year drought of Japanese Ozeki. Um, nothing compared to like the 20-year drought of Japanese Yokozuna, but like, you know, there's a lot more Ozeki than there are Yokozuna. So <laughs> still, kind of a, still kind of a drought. Um, but yeah, obviously uh, the Mongolians are up at the top. It, the the Bonsuke that I just read off to you, Baruto and Kota Oshu, are both um, Eastern European. Um, so yeah, it, it's definitely the Seven Samurai narrative is still continuing. Like you know these these guys these guys are going to take back our national sport for for you know you know have some more Japanese success. Uh, speaking of Japanese success, Jimi Hendrix technically only had one hit. What was it? Oh, I was going to say Purple Rain, but that is not it. That is no. not it. Um, <laughs> no, my. <laughs> I, I, can't, I hear the song. What is it called? Uh, it is not Purple Haze either. No. Ryan Ryan blew his wad on Purple Haze. That's incorrect. Oh, crap. You're right. We only have one guess per. Dang it. <laughs> the National Anthem. <laughs> <laughs> he did no, I think really somebody else that wrote one that one. Time. <laughs> no, that was me. He <laughs> called... Oh man, Mac is this is gonna rack Mac's brain, isn't it? All right, time's up. I, I know it's the wrong one, what? but it's the, <laughs> I know it's the wrong one, but I'm just, it's the song. It's like it's Mac it, gets negative points for no, typing. I know, I know hey of, Jude. It's I know hey Jude is not by him, but it's it's the yeah. I think it's the song where he goes, Hey Jude, where are you going with that gun in your hand? Hey Joe. Hey Joe. And That's also was that was of. not a hit, technically. Oh. At that least like Billboard hit. style. Still a hit. good song. Oh no! I mean, Jimmy Jimmy Hendrix wrote a bajillion songs that are awesome and should have been hits, but just you know didn't happen. Uh, All along the Watchtower was the only one of his that ever actually charted. Dang it! Uh, and technically, he didn't write that one either. That's a Bob Dylan cover. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I still say that national anthem was fire, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that wasn't the question. <laughs> Um, so, uh, we have Kodo Shogaku as the first Japanese, uh, uh, Ozeki in four years. Uh, and he actually just kicks ass in his debut as well, which is, you know, the, the Ozeki hangover is something we talk about a lot, but, uh, did not happen for Kodo Shogaku. He went 11 and four, uh, you know, proved that he, he did a hundred percent deserve it. Um, but, uh, after that, we, we had about six years where he was one of the top Ozeki's. Um, he, he stayed Ozeki from 2011 until 2017 when he was demoted. Um, and that's kind of when, you know, our recollection enters the picture. Um, but if we had started watching sumo just like a year and a half earlier, we would have caught the big moment. Yep. Uh, the big moment being his January, 2016, you show, um, a couple like, and there's five years here in between him getting promoted and him getting the you show problem is there's just not a whole lot of like specific events i mean i'm not gonna list off like oh he got an eight and seven then a nine and six you know like that's no don't worry about that but um i I guess the only other couple notable things were he finally as an ozeki in 2012 after wrestling for 10 years finally had an injury that caused him to miss matches he had been a an iron man uh attended every match for a full 10 years before that which uh, looks like in impressive. 2008, he missed two mat, three matches. 
in January 2008. Yeah, but that goes against my narrative. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> I, I actually skipped over my notes and I didn't go back and correct this one because uh, I had written this one before I found out about the 2008 one. He actually got <laughs> injured and was told, obviously, because it's sumo, they, they said 10 days rest. Uh, and he decided that that meant three days rest. And then yeah. he came back to get his kachi kochi. He, he uh, was hard was, of hearing. He, he just misheard what he said. You said two days. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Two. Da- I'll give it, I'll give it two or three. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so my bad there, but yeah, he had only had that one Fusen and two absences in 2008 as a Komasubi uh, until he missed. Uh, let's see. He missed uh, 12 days of a tournament in 2012. And then a year later had another injury that caused him to miss 13 days. But uh, that was that was pretty much it. He was very very solid um, throughout this throughout this period. Not a whole lot of Kadoban, maybe one or two here and there. Uh, he got another June U show in this in this long stretch, uh, a twelve and three uh, June U show. That let's see, I'm I'm sure it was Hakuho because it's always Hakuho. <laughs> yeah, it was Hakuho, um, <laughs> but. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the, the, the big deal here, um, I, well, personally for him, he, he also had two engagements. Uh, one of them in 2012 was broken off, but then in 2015, he actually, uh, met somebody and did, did get married. He credits his fiance with helping him through those injuries. Which one, the one that he broke off with or the one that stuck around? <laughs> I, oh. you, you, you can't tell us that he had a broken off engagement and not like spill the tea. You know, if I could, do you think that I would like let that slide if I knew the answer? <laughs> do you think I would? Yeah, no, the, if, if I knew, yeah, you would know. I, I can promise you that. Um, what movie soundtrack featured Who Let the Dogs Out? What, what oh. movie brought that one to popularity? This is the first one that I genuinely don't think I know. Oh, but we have open Google. You have open Google. Matt gets a point. It is Rugrats. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> All right. That was very far from my mind. <laughs> not uh, not on your list of movies to guess there. <laughs> no, I was thinking like, dude, where's my car? No. <laughs> <laughs> next one I would thought would be Rat Race. That was the next time I heard it in a movie. Yeah, that's like the same kind of like area. Dude, yeah. where's my car? Rugrats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it's in same the same audience watching both of those things. Yeah. Exactly. It's in the same like mental filing cabinet drawer. <laughs> I get I just it. remember yeah. after one summer it was being played everywhere. I was like, oh, okay. everywhere. Yeah. Uh before we get into the uh the full you show, since that's gonna be like a nice long individual story, let's do one more. Name something Afro Man didn't do because he got high. This was probably my favorite question. <laughs> yeah, I feel like uh, we got go to work as an option. Uh, yes, that is a correct answer. I think yeah. Mac had clean my room first, though. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, clean my room. That is the. I was gonna clean my room, but then I got high. <laughs> I definitely you know, got. That's a that's a good all... point, Mac. We should make everyone sing their answer if it's gonna yeah. count. <laughs> yeah, it definitely got all of us like singing the song in our head. Like, eh. oh yeah, <laughs> that was a good song. <laughs> Honestly, I just felt like you're going to say that you didn't go to work. Like I have very little recollection of that song. That just felt like a pretty yeah. safe guess to me. <laughs> yeah. That's a song where I like have like all the, the verse, like just like as mumbles, but then, yeah. then I got yeah. high. <laughs> that's the only lyric I know. A hundred percent. Um, uh, what number of Eiffel saying I'm blue. Oh, the uh, six D five. <laughs> Mac got you, it. Oh, 65. Yeah. <laughs> it was Eiffel six, right? D five. <laughs> I technically you got one of the digits. Zero credit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but Matt got them both in first. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so let's talk about the U show here. Um, this is January 2016. Uh, Kota Shogaku. Uh, he's he's. You know, he's in the mix for a long time, but that's not necessarily like out of the ordinary for a long time. Ozeki by this point, uh, he gets uh, his first nine wins. He gets through most of like the Sanyaku and some of the Maigashira. But then day 10, 11 and 12, he's got to face all three Yokozuna. Uh, day 10, he manages to beat Kakuryu. Day 11. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry, why, that's why all doesn't that surprise yeah, me? <laughs> um, but day 11... In his, let's see, day 11, he beats Hakuho 
for one of his only six times in his career. Wow. <laughs> they are six and 56 in favor of Hakuho. <laughs> Jeez. But this is one of the six. <laughs> this is one of them. God damn it. It's probably one of the better win records against Hakuho. Honestly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, he actually, he also has a winning record against Haruma Fuji. 30 to 35 in favor of Kota Shogaku. And this that is one sense. of the 35. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, day 10, 11, and 12 is where it's like, okay, yep, it might actually be happening here. Uh, he beats all three Yokozuna in quick succession. Um, and then ironically, the next day, he loses to the lowest ranked opponent he faces in the entire tournament, Toyonoshima. Uh, they're, they're actually longtime good friends. Um, and uh, this, I'm sure, is one of their most memorable matches. Uh, let's see. What is their lifetime score? Uh, they are 27 to 16 in favor of Kota Shogaku, but that's still a, that's still a buttload of matches. Um, but yeah, so we, <laughs> Ryan, what the hell? <laughs> I'm, oh. I'm, I'm anticipating the next question. Ryan preemptively <laughs> typed aqua Barbie girl. <laughs> I, I mean, as far as blind guesses go, you could do a lot worse. <laughs> uh, fair point. Uh, no credit, but damn it. <laughs> Sorry, go on. Uh, day 13, um, Kota Shogaku loses to Toya Noshima, uh, but then he wins on day 14 against Tochi Ozan and goes into day 15 with a one-match lead over Hakuho. Uh, and if he beats Goedo, he clinches it, and he gets him by Tsuki Otoshi. Clinches it. Hakuho, nothing he can do about it. Uh, Kota Shogaku finishes 14 and 1 and wow. breaks a 10 year streak uh, of no Japanese Yusho wins. Super huge moment. Uh, if you, you can find this one on YouTube. There's, there's a, a number of videos I found of like compiling all his matches back to back. And you get that classic bumpity bump for most of the matches, but you also Ooh. get something that we don't see a lot in his later career here. There's a lot of his, um, uh, he, he does a lot of like lateral movement at the last second and dumps people. And that definitely was kind of gone by his, uh, you know, his late career that we were watching. He was capable um, of that at one point, right? <laughs> yeah. So like, uh, against, against Haruma Fuji for one, like he, he bumped he bumps him all the way back to the edge. And as Haruma Fuji is fighting for his life, Kota Shogaku just like slips a foot to the right. And suddenly Haruma Fuji's on the ground. Wow. Super, super interesting. And I, yeah, it's the this whole seven samurai generation. I wish that we would have been uh, able to know them a little bit better. But yeah, super super cool, super fun uh, uh, compilations out there on YouTube. If you want to see this this you show win, uh, I got a couple quotes here from him. He says, "I'm so happy I can't even put it into words." Uh, then he continues to do so to put it into words. <laughs> uh, but I'm also thrilled because I'm standing here now thanks to a great number of people who supported me when I struggled and didn't get the results that I wanted. So grateful to the fans, grateful to uh, the family and all that. Mm -hmm. This quote I found kind of weird, kind of like almost like uncomfortable here. I'll just read it. He says, all the Japanese wrestlers want to win championships, but sumo is about winning. Maybe we Japanese are too set in our ways. Maybe we lack the greed to win at all costs. We can learn from them. Referring to the non-Japanese wrestlers. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. I think that noise kind of sums up our feelings. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Not, uh, yeah, kind of a weird one. Uh, what drinks do they drink in tub thumping? Oh. Uh, I need all four of them. He drinks a whiskey drink. He drinks a vodka drink. Yep. Two correct answers. And yes, and then it's the two that nobody knows. <laughs> Cider and lager. Yes, Ryan, you get a point. Ah, oh, dang it, I was I having a mountain one. <laughs> <laughs> and technically, though, lager comes before cider. Yeah, you didn't say in order. I did not. You're correct. So you, you still know, get a point. Drink. <laughs> it just proves in this trivia game, I get knocked down. But God damn it, I get up again. You're never going to keep me down. <laughs> um, in my research for this, I, I, I was trying to figure out what tub thumping meant. Like it's, yeah. that's gotta be some sort of weird euphemism for something like either dirty or like <laughs> something drug or booze related or something. <laughs> no, it just means like, like drumming on a bucket. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I guess something that you would do when you have a quick succession of whiskey, drink, vodka, drink, 
lager drink and cider drink. It's what I do whenever I'm pissing the night away. Yep. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. Yeah, you know that's a lie. <laughs> so a week after winning uh, with the Yokozuna discussions finally Ooh, coming about uh, here, uh, <laughs> uh, a week later, Kota Shogaku gets married. Yeah. Um, and uh, actually, a former prime minister was in attendance. Oh. And then we go into March of 2016 with the first potential Japanese Yokozuna in a long time, and he gets a uh, eight and seven. At Aye. least he started off four and zero oh to give them a little yeah. bit of hope. He did a right sight better than our most recent Yokozuna hopeful Takake show. <laughs> yeah, still mad about that one. Yeah, I mean he gets all the way through the first week at. Uh, seven and one, uh, you know, and it's still like, you know, there's still hope there, but then he goes six and, or he goes one and six in the end of that tournament. It's just like, damn it. (laughs) So I'm looking at that tournament. He goes eight and one against everybody below the rank of Ozeki and then oh, and three against all the Ozeki. Oh, and three against all the Yokozuna. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, that's not shocking, but it's disappointing for sure. I mean, a guy that just won the U show and beat all of these people. You got to hope he'd. Yeah. But like you said, one hit wonder. Hey, what murder were the Buggles attempting to report? I honestly have no idea what any of those words you said. Yeah. Yeah. What? (laughs) (laughs) What murder were the Buggles attempting to report? Well, I just typed in Buggles and I got pictures of Bugles. (laughs) Oh, here we go. All right. Hold on. Uh, uh, Flarek has awoken from his hibernation. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, hold on. There's a chance. I'm, I'm looking this up, too. I'm like, who the heck? All right. That's... <laughs> that is incorrect. Ah. All right. Hold on. This is going to need to be edited around. Flarek has awoken from his slumber and wins a point. <laughs> What? Oh, video, video killed, killed the radio star. Oh, video! Daggone it! I that typed is the it murder. In wrong. <laughs> and the no one listened to the buggles. <laughs> <laughs> video, video is still out there on the streets. <laughs> <laughs> was that oh. one somehow worth twenty points? <clears throat> twenty <laughs> points. It, it was worth seven, which actually ties oh. you in the lead. <laughs> no, I, I. I Honestly, I'm not sure I'm even keeping track properly. I don't. So, um, <laughs> it's okay. I'll take it. So, like I, I mean, we've been talking about one hit wonders, and this is kind of the point where it sadly like becomes clear that that's what's going on. Um, because there, he he's never really the same after after this. He doesn't he doesn't have like, um, let's see how many in the rest of his Ozeki career he gets. So he follows up with that eight and seven, then he gets a ten and five. And he never gets double digits again as an Ozeki. Um, and unfortunately, only a year after his U show is when he is getting demoted. And this is this is right around the time that we started watching, um, because this is where his attempt to regain the Ozeki rank is the next legendary story of the Kota Shogaku uh, uh, storyline here. Um, but yeah, some other things that happened in this this brief interlude between uh, his U show and getting dumped out of the rank. Um, he does beat Kisuno Sato when Kisuno Sato won the U show, and he was the mm. only one to do so. So that was pretty cool. Uh, that same year, he also had a baby a- hey. in 2017. Right. Um, but eventually, these two consecutive five and ten rankings or, or uh, results dropped him in uh, after the January 2017 tournament, and he is Sekiwake in March of 2017. What number Mambo? Uh, did no, I'm kidding. That's way too easy. Yeah, that's what um, I was say. Wow, fine. who is all that Lou Bega needs? And yes, I know all three of you are singing the song in your head right now, and that's exactly <laughs> what I wanted. What song? Lou Bega sang Mambo number five. Who is all he needs? And Sandra is incorrect, right? Ah! <laughs> Should have just looked up. The Mac is almost there. I see it. I see the gears turning behind his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Rita, Mac gets a point. Bit of bit of Rita. I was like, wait a minute. All it's I Rita. Need. Yep. I said like Sandra three times. In the sun. In Sandra's brain. in the sun. A little bit of Mary all night long. They're all like two syllable names, so it's right? they all run together. 
Yeah, I, 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 in my head, it was like a little bit of Monica in my life, a <laughs> little bit of Sandra by my side, a little bit of Sandra. <laughs> Sandra! <laughs> Sandra! 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 Oh, man. Uh, so Kota Shogaku spent 32 basho at Ozeki. Very respectable long time run there. Uh, but post Ozeki here, the very first tournament he spends at Sekiwake after getting booted from the rank. This one we all remember. Um, why don't actually, why don't I pass this off to you guys? Why don't you get, why don't one of you guys tell me what happens here? Because it's seared into our brains forever. I, I think Mac experiences the most r- rage about this one still. So you can, you, can, you can take it away. I, I, I will take it away. Just as Terra no Fuji took away the Ozeki chance of Koto <gasps> Jogiku with the hanker. And that's oh, all dastardly. That's I mean, all I'm going to say. I, I, I feel like, Terra no Fuji has been proven right as the years go on. I mean, this was clearly yes. a man beyond his prime and not really worthy of the Ozeki rank anymore. Yeah. But still, the just the audacity. The and final he, match, final day. It was actually day 14. Yes. Well, it I, was, but it was the nah, still. It was like, okay, if he just had to get one more win to keep it going. Yeah. yeah. So he came happen. into the day. Uh he came into the day at uh eight and five meaning that he needs to get two more wins. Because if when you're booted down from Ozeki, you get one chance at Sekiwake. If you get 10 wins, you get booted right back into Ozeki. Otherwise, you got to do it the hard way, get the, the run of three Basho. Um, but uh, so basically, we get to day 14, and Kota Shogaku, if he takes one more loss, the dream is over. Uh, that sixth loss seals the deal. And we got Terano Fuji over there, who's coming into the match at uh, 12 and 1. Like, he's... He's doing fine. Yeah, like, clearly. <laughs> he's he's okay. He doesn't have to do this. <laughs> but <laughs> but like it's Kota Shogaku. You know what he's gonna do. He's just gonna plow straight forward as hard as possible with no complications whatsoever. So Terra Fuji just gets out of the way. Uh and Kota Shogaku dumps and does like the saltiest non bow ever. As Terra yeah. Fuji is there now was like rage. His enemy. It's almost like <laughs> Terra no Fuji had the win at all costs. That, yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> for the show you should have learned from. <laughs> Maybe we lack the greed to win at all costs. <laughs> I, 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 or at least the, the thinking that would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I believe this moment spawned one of Flarek's hottest of takes and mm. worst theories that we've had on this podcast. <laughs> yes, it was the, the very evidence-based theory of, is Kodo Shogiku a dick? because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like why would you do this to someone like I, I think i might have evolved now kind of knowing terra no fuji i bet he just thought it was funny because i thought it was hilarious <laughs> i get mac was full of some rage but i was like Ooh, i was just I was full of like happy. mirth i was just like oh this is this is good stuff give me another one please <laughs> i was not happy <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I, like maybe he maybe he's an asshole maybe like everyone else was kind of like I'll, sh- I'll show him like i i hold his fate in my hand i'll do it in like the the fun the worst way possible yeah no that was absolutely savage and yeah i will i will never forget the look on kota shogaku's face as he goes and he does like the requisite Oof. stand across the ring you're supposed to bow and he just like glares and then leaves <laughs> oh man, I, I feel bad for Kodo Shogiku because looking at this Basho, he went two and zero against Yokozuna in the first uh, four days of the tournament. But then in the final five days, he dropped matches to like Ikioi and Takada Fuji, and so I mean, which are like respectable, but not like nah. yeah. If you're beating Hatama Fuji and Kakuryu, you should be yeah. beating Ikioi and Takada Fuji. Exactly. Uh, so he he had. He had the opportunity right in front of him, uh, but he has he has nobody to blame but himself. Yeah, and, and he was no also Fuji. like thirty three ish at the time, so like he's he's nearing the end of his prime years, regardless. Um, so like, you, you know, like later in the tournament, you know that that just that wear and tear just builds up. So I'm sure that was also a factor. Um, in Spirit in the Sky, Norman Greenbaum saying that you have got to have a friend in Jesus. Why was that ironic? <laughs> yeah, I was like, fine, I'll look it up. <laughs> <laughs> in the meantime, uh, Kota Shogaku is only the fourth wrestler in history to never get a Kinboshi until after being an Ozeki, which I think is kind of funny. 
He got three Kenboshi in his career, the most that anyone in this category has ever gotten, but he didn't get any of them until after he had already been in Ozeki and then got uh, got booted down. Do I need to do I need to hit the timer on this one? You guys find anything? Uh, I was just looking up not really. two facts. facts. I'm <laughs> gonna say because Norman Greenbaum was an atheist. <laughs> You are on the right track. No points for anybody, but it's because he's Jewish. Oh, oh. <laughs> he he is, was, and always has been Jewish. But like that particular line, he just put in there because it kind of like fit the like almost country <laughs> theme of the song. <laughs> Wait, one of his singles was Nancy Whiskey. Hell yeah. I like that song. Not shocked that that one did not, uh, did not chart either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. So, this we're we're now in like the thoroughly GSB era, so I'm sure we have a lot of a, a lot of memories from this time. But Kota Shogaku, he stopped doing his big awesome stretch thing um, around this time when he when he uh, dropped out of the Sanyaku ranks, and he just bounced up and down a couple times. Nothing particularly remarkable, other than those awesome Kinboshi, which weird weird for him to get them that late in his career, but he did get uh, he did get a few. He had a couple of close calls with getting prizes that got denied, like on final day losses. Um, you know, like the, the situation where it's like, if you win on this last day, you get this prize and never happened again for him. Um, after other than those Kinboshi, he doesn't really have any accolades to his name post you show. Hmm. But uh, I mean, I guess he has one, one minor accolade is that he's one of the many Kotenage victims of Tamawashi. Oh, no. Yeah, July 2018, he was uh, sent Kyujo. He he was already having a bad a bad basho, but uh, Tamawashi Kyujo'd him with a Kotenage, one of one of several in that kind of that 2018. I think was like the prime elbow busting year for him. <laughs> um, but yeah, eventually uh, the inevitable happened, and in the November tournament of 2020, Kota Shogaku was ranked in Jurio again for the first time in like 16 years. Uh, and he starts off one and five and that last match, he knew it was his last match because he did his stretch one more time. Uh, the Chris, uh. Chris Sumo video on YouTube shows uh, a clip of that. Um, but yeah, it was the stretch that he had not done for, let's see, Sanyaku, I believe was when he quit doing it. So like roughly three years, uh, he'd been just bouncing around the Maegashira ranks, not doing his signature stretch. So. Uh, he he knew going into that one, and he did the stretch, and then he retired before uh, before his next day's match. What is the popular but unofficial interpretation of the phrase "turning Japanese" in the song titled that by The Vapors? Masturbation is right. Ryan was quick on the trigger for that one. <laughs> Whoa! I was about to say that was pretty fast there, Ryan. Ryan was typing that before I finished the question. <laughs> I must have never listened to that song. I like, actually <laughs> listened to it. It is unofficial, but the interpretation is his girlfriend left him. Uh, so now he's he's disappointed. And the turning Japanese is in reference to squinting while he is doing the deed. Okay. <laughs> wow. Interesting. So after going one in six, if you count the Fusen in Jurio, Kota Shogaku it retires. Uh, he had already main, He had already obtained a elder stock. So he is now known as Hide no Yama. Mm. which translates a lot better than his previous Shikona. This one means mountain of excellence, which is oh, Ooh, mm, excellent. Chef's, chef's kiss for sure. That was uh, yeah, that's, a, that's a big one. Um, but uh, who is so fine that they blow Tony Basil's mind? I feel like, yep. Mickey is correct. Ryan. Thank you. That was uh, uh, another one. I could tell mm. that you knew off the top of your head. For some reason, I'm really good with these one hit wonder things. I think it's because I watched a lot of like the VH1 countdowns of top one hit wonders back yes. in the days. <laughs> yes, that was probably my number one uh, resource while coming up with questions. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, like, I, I, all these songs are just playing back in my head and I'm like, holy crap, I remember these. <laughs> yeah. And, and nothing else by that person. No. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, uh, now that we, we don't really have any news since, uh, but uh, Kota Shogaku, a.k.a. Hide no Yama, is now going into coaching. Um, I'm not positive if, if he will stick with that name or stick with his current stable. That's all going to be up in the air, and I'd be willing to bet he'll have a retirement ceremony, probably second half of 2021. They generally wait, what, 
six months to a year or so before like I mean, the official hair cutter. It's Aro all Washi up in the air just right had now. his. Whoa. Okay. He that's did. longer than I thought. But uh, Omnishki delayed his till 2022. So. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So maybe it will happen by the time that we die. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. No Danpatsu for you. So his name came up a couple times throughout this, but uh, got to make sure to shout out to Kisuno Sato. Um, they, Kisuno Sato and Kota Shogaku have faced off more than any two wrestlers ever, mm-hmm. um, all the way back to 2004. Uh, fun, fun fact on that one. He is yeah, go ahead. in the, of the top five of Rikshi who like face, face each other. He's in every single one of them. Like, what? uh, yeah, he has 66 uh-huh. against uh, uh, Kisuno Sato, like you said. He has 63 against Hakuho. He has uh, 62 against Kota, uh, against Kota himself. Uh, against Harbor <laughs> Fuji, 61. Uh, no, I guess like he's top three. There's a Kisuno Sato one. But then he has a Hakuho one with 60. So like he is, he's been around a long time, and he faced people who, who've been around a long time as well. Yeah, that that seven samurai generation along with Hakuho, Haruma Fuji, Kakuyu a little bit, all just like, all just like stayed at the top. Like that top generation was like kind of stratified for a long time. And the Kisuno Sato one is also partly because they came up at the same time. They they faced off so early in their careers that Kisuno Sato was still Hagiwara. Um, they're Jeez. they've actually faced off sixty seven times because he was not Kisuno Sato yet. So that one doesn't come <laughs> up in searches. Some other records that Kota Shogaku holds. Uh, uh, we mentioned that he was only the fourth uh, to get his first Kinboshi post Ozeki, and he has more than anyone else does in that category. Uh, he is tied for the ninth most Yushos in the Hakuho era with one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, can you guys name the the eight people that have multiple Yushos in the Hakuho era? Multiple? All right. Oh, we so Hakuho, of course. Never mind. I was about to say, never. <laughs> Taka Keisho. Terra yep. no Fuji, Kakuyu, Haruma Fuji, um, Kisei no Sato, uh, Mitake Yumi. Um, there's two more. Hakuho counts. Hakuho. Oh. Um, and then uh, think back. Asa uh, Shoryu. Asa Shoryu. There you go. Hmm. Yep. Because, yeah, I mean, Hakuho was already at the top and, you know, before Asa Shoryu was out. There's there's a lot of overlap. So I, I counted it there. But yeah, only only eight people since in the last like twelve years or so have multiple Yusho, show, which Jeez. is just crazy. Wow. So yeah, technically he is tied for he's in the top ten of U show winners <laughs> in that period. <laughs> uh, in March of 2020, uh, upon the retirement of Toyonoshima and Sokokurai, Kota Shogaku spent about a year being the oldest active Sekitori. Uh, oh, wow. He retired at uh, 36, 37 or so. I guess I didn't realize he was quite that old. Yeah, um, and and almost all of that time was in the top division, meaning that he is top 10 in uh, all-time Basho and wins in the top division. He spent 92 Basho in Makauchi, and he got 718 wins in Makauchi. So that's seventh most Basho and sixth most wins. So Jeez. pretty cool. What happens as a result of the 99 balloons that German band Nena sang about? I like... I like Flarek waste the sea. Does Mac or Ryan know it right away? No. Okay. Neither of I'm them are typing yet. Research. I'm going in. <laughs> <laughs> what happens as a result of the 99 red balloons? Oh, don't give me the lyrics in German. <laughs> I was just reading them. Like, I don't want this in German. <laughs> I. That's also I, gibberish, isn't it? Yeah. Very much gibberish. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I can't was hoping, read that. I was hoping to get away with that if it sounded German enough. Yeah. Like, that I maybe I would it. be like, uh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know enough to say that it's wrong. Mm-hmm. All right, we're going to hit the timeout. Uh, nuclear war happens because of 99 balloons. Oh, God, damn. I was going to say war. <laughs> but then I and didn't want my didn't. one guess to be wrong, so I wanted to do research. Then that's, I had to, like, <laughs> interpret lyrics, and that wasn't going to happen. That's why, that's why I typed in German, nuclear war. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo- I like this. The, li- the lyrics of the original German version tell a story. 99 balloons are set free and are mistaken for UFOs. <laughs> Yeah, that's yep. what Flarek said. Deutsch gabar geht man nicht. Yeah. <laughs> I love da. how you spell Deutsch okay, like da. the way that you would pronounce it in English and not the way that it's actually pro- <laughs> or spelt in Dick German. Und lass einfliegen. So oh. anyways, um, <laughs> let's talk about Kota Shogaku's style because this part is pretty straightforward. Uh, he, Yorikiri 
where would you think this ranks among his most common winning techniques? 90 percent. Ninety nine percent. It's actually sixty percent. Top seven. <laughs> yeah. Top seven most used kimarite. He only has eight techniques that he used more than two percent of the time. And yes, Yorikiri is sixty percent of all of his wins. He has four hundred and fifty two Yorikiri wins, and <laughs> nothing else more than one hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he used Yorikiri a hundred and forty percent more often than is typical. Uh, He used Oshidashi as his second most common technique, which he used only half as often as normal. (laughs) So, (laughs) yeah. And then the rest are just like variations of, you know, Yori Taoshi, you know, some Uwate Nage throws and stuff like that. A little bit of pulling here and there, but but everything is less often than normal, except for Yori Kiri and also Yori Taoshi uses 100% more often than normal. His losses, uh, say again, Ryan? I was just going to say, he's got one Ashitori in there. (laughs) <laughs> well huh. he's got some weird ones in there but yeah. i generally i generally cut it off at around two percent oh, of wins. no i know i just i just find that interesting that he's got one leg pick back in 2004 when he was in jurio poor juzon <laughs> got leg picked by kodo shogiku <laughs> yeah it's gonna go down in history as that that one on, yep. on kodo shogiku's <laughs> kimarite <laughs> list his uh his losses unsurprisingly yori kiri tops the list um if you get into Yorikiri type matches as often as you possibly can, inevitably that's where most of your losses are going to come from. Uh, but he he lost by Yorikiri only about twenty percent more often than normal. Um, but it is still by far his number one losing technique. Uh, Oshidashi is all the way down at fifth uh, because <laughs> wow. yeah he did not get into pushing matches. That was kind of <laughs> the point. Seventy percent less often than uh, than a, a normal wrestler you would expect. Um, his number two and his number three most common losing techniques are unsurprisingly pulling techniques. Hataki Komi makes up a full 13% of his losses, which is 40% more often than normal. <laughs> and uh, of those 81 Hataki Komis, I'd bet you at least half of those are just straight hankas. Yeah. Because like, if you, if you see Kota Shogaku across from you, Mm-hmm. You know one thing that's going to work for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I was just imagining uh, hearing that stat that Teru Nifuji did a similar thing where the guy says, okay, this guy loses to a lot of Hitaki Komi. So if you hanka, you're going to get a free win. <laughs> yeah. uh, I would like to point out uh, Koto Shokiku is the master of shutting down Ashitori's. Not a single loss to <laughs> Ashitori <laughs> in his entire career. He never faced off against Teratsuyoshi then. Oh, Ooh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, he'd be toast. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so he retired. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so, uh, a couple other, um, uh, vocab points on his style. The, the big stretch that he did, um, was informally known as the Koto Bauer named after the Ina Bauer figure skating technique that involves leaning back super far. Hmm. And also the bumpity bump is officially in Japanese referred to as Gaburi Yori. So that not uh, the hug and chug, <laughs> not the hug and chug, but I prefer hug and chug or bumpity bump. So that's I like what the bumpity bump. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Koto Shogiku, two and three all time against Teretsu Yoshi. There you go. Two losses by Shitate Nage and one by Yorikiri. And I bet you all of those losses were almost Ashitori's. Yep. <laughs> 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 to uh, to sum up Koto Shogiku's in ring presence. Um, Wikipedia phrased it as simple, aggressive, direct, predictable, not necessarily technical. Yeah. Koto Shogiku. <laughs> Essence of Koto Shogiku. <laughs> Last question. Uh, yeah. What do Marcy Playground smell in here? Boom. Sex and candy. Correct. That was another one hit wonder. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't even know the name of the band. Can, so no, there's no way like, I'm going to be able to what? name another song by them. Yeah. <laughs> So that's going to that's gonna wrap up our Kota Shogaku story. Anything that we didn't cover that you guys remember fondly of Kota Shogaku? Anything you're going to miss? I think for me, it, it, it's kind of tough because we did see him on the downswing of his career. Like we were just getting started watching Sumo when he was demoted from Ozeki. So we never got to see any uh, of his career defining moments. Uh, so I, I just go back to when we were in Japan in Nagoya and we watched him live on day eight of the Nagoya tournament in 2019. Uh, It was a 
quick loss for Kota Shogiku against then up and comer Tomo Kaze. Uh, but that's the only time that we got to see uh, Kota Shogiku live. Uh, so that, that, that was, that was fun to be able to actually see him at least once. Mm. He uh, also beat Hakuho in that tournament, despite going seven and eight. That was his last, uh, his last Kinboshi, his last win over Hakuho. Yeah. So that was something that I kind of noted when I was looking through this. So Kodo Shogiku, his last match against Hakuho, even though he was uh, six and 56 against the man, (laughs) he did win his final match against Hakuho, as did he also win his final match against Haruma Fuji, as did he also win his final match against Kisei Nosato. Cool. Ooh. So I think those were the three matchups that are the top three matchups of all time. And Kodo Shogiku won the final one in each of those matchups. And all, yeah, that's, and that's just poor sportsmanship. there, not doing the job and giving the rub to the, to the guy that's <laughs> sticking around. Just shame. Yeah. I look to see if that streak continued for like all Yokozuna that he faced, but uh, Kakuryu got the best of him the final seven times Oof. that they fought. And against Asa Shoryu, he was like one in 15. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Looking up head to heads with Asa Shoryu is similar to looking up head to heads with Hakuho. <laughs> yeah. Just mm-hmm. assume it was a loss. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mac or Flarek, anything to add before we go? I would say is like he would be very missed. I have very fond memories of the guy. He was, I liked him. The predictable was kind of, I, I actually very much resonate with that description of his style. It, because it was really nice when we were starting out. He has a very stylized brand of sumo. Like he always kind of did the cool little stretch thing where it's, oh, that's cool. And he did it every single time. And like he also like had the very signature of where, very unique of where he did the bumpy bump, where it's like, oh, that's kind of weird, but I recognize this. <laughs> I, I recognize <laughs> this Rikshi. I, I know who this guy is. Mm-hmm. And so, and like when you're kind of starting out and you just don't know anyone, that's just very, very useful. And so I, I'm, I guess I have very fond memories of that. It was kind of very helpful to get into Simo when I was first starting out. And he kind of seems like a nice guy. I remember watching a YouTube video. <laughs> I, despite my I, trying I to like, drum yeah, under I was the about bus. To say, yeah. I like your, your reversal there of your theory. He still, he still might be a total asshole. Like, you, know, <laughs> you don't know. We don't know. But, I, sure. do, but I would say the evidence I have, like, I remember watching like, a video of him where, like, where his hair, they went to like, a local park. And he was just kind of swinging like a dumbbell like a bunch of times. Well, like, I don't know. He seemed like a pretty nice guy in that that regard. So he works out just like just like the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> I no, I, I like how you, you brought up that he was easy to get to know because you knew what was coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that for the same reason, I, I kind of latched on to Aoyama at the beginning because he's like mm-hmm. super easy to recognize. You know what he's going to do. It pisses off Ryan. That's like every reason <laughs> yeah. that I would have to like a guy. As a bod like an Adonis, he's a, <laughs> <laughs> nice to look at. Yes, very visually appealing. That's that was the main yep. the main kicker for Aoyama. Yeah, he he, he hasn't reached his full potential yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, <laughs> he's like thirty three years old, <laughs> and still throwing those meat hooks for fists. Thirty four years old. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, the biggest thing I'm going to miss about Koto Shogiku is that signature blue mawashi. Other than what Florek was saying, uh, just with his style, his predictability, amazing, amazing person to get to latch onto when you're starting out. But I just like the blue colored mawashi. Yeah, I, t- I guess too, the, the one other thing I remember with Koto Shogiku was predictability. That was also one thing I hated about him towards the end, of where he had the tachi eye. <laughs> of where he says, "Okay, I'm going to put it down now, and then I'm going to very predictably put down my other one, so you know exactly when I'm going to start my tachi eye." He had that wind up too. So yeah, it was there. like the final full basho that he had, where he kind of tried to mix it up. He had like the high butt, just because mm-hmm. like he had that injury, and you knew he didn't have the power anymore, and he just had to find some way to get some advantage so he he mixed up the tachi at the very end after it was a little at the very end but there was like a whole basha like it wasn't the case and it was like like once again true this style very predictable <laughs> <laughs> yeah it can be it can be good when you're struggling to get to know guys but it can be bad when you just want them to succeed and not lose the same way every time mm-hmm. yeah all right, so uh, why don't we wrap up here? But uh, while we are doing this, there's one last question for you. One last one-hit wonder question. And then after we do our closeout, I'll reveal the scores. Uh, in Take On Me by AHA, 
uh, there's the super high note at the end of the chorus. Well, Ryan is doing his wrap up review thing. What <laughs> note is it? Quit typing, Ryan. You got to do the sign off. <laughs> oh, you. All right. <laughs> So if you're also taken aback by being forced to do the sign off at the end of your podcast, leave a five star review for us on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast listening service. You can find us on social media. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was uh, too busy. Looking this is up the this. best way to to mix up our sign off here. <laughs> Let's just yeah. ask you a hard <laughs> trivia question. Yeah, this. Uh, yeah. Uh, what was I going to say? You can find us on social media. Find us there. <laughs> Yeah, just look at Grand Sumo Breakdown. You'll find us. <laughs> GrandSumoBreakdown.wordpress.com, where we have all of our uh, all of our blogs and reposts of old episodes and such. And if you happen to know what that note actually is from AHA, drop us a line at GrandSumoBreakdown at gmail.com or give us a call at 805-613-7866. That's 805-613-SUMO. Uh, and the winner of the question and the full uh, title of Best One-Hit Wonder Useless Trivia Knower goes to Ryan. It is an E. E5, ah, if you're being particular, talking about, um, well, I mean, according to Wikipedia, I don't, I, I don't know shit about like listening to music and knowing what note it is. I'm terrible. Yeah. At that. So I thought it was an E flat. It is. I, it is. I, I, I'm a little weird with that song because I remember playing that in pep band on trumpet. And so different keys kind of threw at me. Oh, yeah, probably, <laughs> probably a different key or something then. But I remember but, yeah, throwing the actual... out high G's for that. But yeah. But go ahead. Technically E5, ah. according to Wikipedia, which, as we all know, has never lied to anyone ever and is the <laughs> ultimate authority on everything. Ryan, I'm going to give you one virtual high five. Here it comes. Here it comes. Let's go over to like the side. Uh, and hit. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> it was just as awkward as I hope it would have been in person. Yeah. <laughs> also, yeah. Uh, big ups for wearing the same T-shirt today. <laughs> we're both wearing the t-shirt from max bachelor party where we yes. did the uh the bigfoot uh timber challenge runners. casey timber yeah. challenge the obstacle course like 5k run thing when like years ago when i was in shape and could probably <laughs> yeah. run a mile without crying and i dislocated my shoulder oh yeah that was right <laughs> <laughs> your wife was mad at you oh she was mad indeed <laughs> The uh the final scores, by the way, Ryan had seven and a half points. One, two, three, four, five. Mac had five and a half points, and Flerick had twenty-three points for landing the perfect uh uh most heavily weighted question. <laughs> but I, I decided at the end, you know, we'll give it to Ryan. I guess he 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 did answer more questions. So there we go. Whatever. I feel robbed. This is uh <laughs> this is robbed pl- Queen Flerick. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we will see you guys shortly on our Bonds K review episode and then our March preview. But uh, until then, enjoy and keep bumpity bumping. That's a good sign off, right? Thank you for listening to Grand Sumo Breakdown. Until next time, throw your salt high and keep moving forward.